for the RAND corporations uh, when uh, you released the Pentagon Papers. Yeah. Snowden worked for both Allen and Hamilton. Yeah. So what is the role of defense contractors in the surveillance state? Can you well, talk about striking. that? In my day, RAND was one of the very few nonprofit private corporations that worked for the national security establishment. Uh, others, like Wessig or IDA, were, were much closer associated, and less independent than we were. Now, of course, uh, Booz Allen is one of hundreds, if not thousands, of corporations that control some of the most sensitive intelligence data. Seventy percent of the intelligence budget goes to private contractors. I don't think that was true for a single dollar uh, 40 years ago, and, and it wasn't true of the Rand Corporation. What that means is, that uh, Snowden himself, I think, very credibly said, why should I, as a mid-level analyst in Booz Allen, have access to information that on the one hand invades the privacy of every American, and on the other hand is not available to the Congress? Well, I had a, a comparable feeling 40 years ago. Why should I have access to a 7,000-page top-secret study that Senator Fulbright of the Foreign Relations Committee can't get and is refused uh, four times, actually, by Secretary Lear on the grounds that he didn't have access to it. I gave it to Senator Fulbright, but he didn't do anything with it because he would be claimed of violating security and they would be, they wouldn't prosecute him, but they would embarrass him and they might take some appropriations away from him. So other people shied away from that. But of course it's absurd for private contractors to have this kind of capability. It really uh, smells of fascism, of corporatism, of the Mussolini sort, the uh, collaboration of corporations and government, and the almost uh, indistinguishable barrier between them, the collaboration between them. So uh, I, I think Snowden is quite right to object to that. Okay. On another topic, you were, uh, in the case of Bradley Manning, the, the government uh, did not pay for the court reporters, stating <laughs> due to lack of funds, you actually went out and raised money for well, even in our case, for, we had uh, to Bradley raise, Manning. How we, is it possible? Yeah, uh, we had to raise money, as I recall, for our own copy of the transcript. But there was a transcript, just copying it costs a lot of money. Uh, in this case, the judge ruled that they didn't even have to provide a transcript. They held it as closely as possible as a closed trial, which is, of course, antithetical to the rule of law, not a public trial. They wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, give public documents, they wouldn't give a transcript. So a group that I was associated with, the Freedom of the Press Foundation, crowdfunded money to be channeled to a, a reporter with court capabilities to be present and to provide a transcript, without which we simply would rely on the scribbled notes of a few reporters in the trial. Well, Mr. Ellsberg, so on one hand, the government does not have the resources to monitor our federal court system. Of course, yes, they we have, have the, resources. <laughs> the resources to monitor every single tra uh, communication <laughs> across all the innocent civilians. Well, so it's a it's a matter of priorities. Uh, and of course that applies right across the board to human. They, this is a government that pretends it doesn't have money to repair crumbling bridges or to provide schools or health capability, but does have money for attack submarines with no other submarines to attack basically anymore in the Soviet Union. Yes. And uh, all these kinds of, and, and ABM systems against countries that don't have ICBMs. So it's it's absolutely absurd set of uh, Final question, Mr. Ellsberg. You identify yourself with Snowden. Bradley Manning. What advice do you have for the poor soul who's working at the NSA or working at one of these defense contractors, seeing injustice and humanity being yeah. carried out every day? What incentive do they have after the trial of Bradley Manning and Snowden well, fleeing to Russia okay. to step in and do what you did? What would you tell that person? I would tell them, don't do what I did, which was to go to Congress first or go to my superiors in the Defense Department. Don't do that. What people advise them to do is the right way to do it, because that does nothing but identify them as troublemakers and potential leakers, and to get them cut off, retaliated against, stigmatized by their people, as happened to the NSA people who did exactly that. As they said, they did it wrong, Snowden did it right. So, and then the next point is, uh, don't do like Manning and allow yourself to be snatched up and put incommunicado and torture cell. Snowden, in this respect, did it exactly right. Gather the documents and, if necessary, uh, do everything you can to keep 
uh, invisibility here, anonymity. Now, uh, actually, WikiLeaks did provide anonymity and was not broken on that. But Bradley Manning himself uh, couldn't resist uh, discussing it with a what turned out to be a government informant. So don't trust any government informants okay. or anybody, uh, one, and uh, do it like Snowden. He, he's done it, I think, exactly right. Now Snowden uh, didn't do perfectly. He obviously uh, had more had the judgment that Hong Kong would be a safe place for him. Wrong. Uh, China had more influence over that than he seemed to have expected. So, uh, and um, maybe not go to Russia at all. So he could have gone directly to Venezuela or Ecuador, that would have been better. Although he felt that that would identify him to the NSA quicker. Now, in regards to the Millennium Generation, what advice do you have for them? Why should they care to go in the footsteps of Daniel Ellsberg, Snowden, Zemanning? Why should they care? Not because there is any guarantee that telling the truth will bring about change. When Snowden says his greatest fear was that nothing was changed, and, and Manning also, that is the likelihood. That's likely. But, the, but no one can say that there is no chance of change, as some do say, and they're wrong. They have no, no proof of that. Uh, the odds are against us, but the possibility is there, and the stakes are enormously high. Their humanity as a whole. In the first instance, there's an individual war like Afghanistan or Iraq to be ended. In the second place, there's democracy in the United States to be ended. The third thing that, Brad, that Snowden has brought out is that the entire world is seeking this interference with the privacy of their own citizens. Not just the U.S., they're all doing it. It's just that the U.S. has a thousand times more capability to do it. But the others will get that. So we have to realize that we live in a new world and we have, and, and uh, it may be too late to change, but it may not, we can't tell. So the answer is to tell the truth, to take the risks. I can't tell individuals to do that. I can't tell your family doesn't count for anything. Your children's education is of no importance. That's for them to judge. Uh, but I can say everybody who knows that the truth is being concealed should consider whether this is not the time for them to speak out and to do it in ways that will both capture public attention, especially with documents, and protect themselves from retaliation. That's what I would tell them. Mr. Ellsberg, thank you so much for a lifetime of activism. It's a thank great you. pleasure and honor to see you. Thank you.